There we go. All right. So Amazon recently redid their account health page. So we're going to have a bit of a presentation about that, just sharing this, and then we'll share this on um, YouTube and Facebook too. So if you guys speak yeah. during this, uh, this part, just know that you guys will be recorded. And obviously we're not giving out any legal advice, just general sort of information. But that's what uh, today's uh, presentation is about. So if you go to your performance health dashboard or account health dashboard, it'll look different. Now you should see the account health rating. And most of it is green. So we've got a bit of a chart here. From The score is from zero to 1,000. From 200 to 1,000 means it's healthy, right? So that's a nice big cushion. If it's 100 to 199, it means you're at risk. You're at risk of being suspended. And in order for you to get to that risk, you would have to have several violations. And Amazon would list all of those violations. And of course, if you're suspended, then your score will be 99 or lower. And then the reason or the way Amazon calculates these, uh, the rating is each policy violation that you get is going to go ahead and lower that score. Now, we've also seen accounts where there's currently no uh, violations, and it's still like around 250 or 300. That's because of the, of the past violations that it received. So it does take time for it to, uh, to increase, for the value to increase again. So just keep that in mind. And again, you'll see something like this in the account on your account health dashboard. Okay, if it's at risk, that means you need to act now. If you're in the green, that means you're okay. But if you still have any issues with any of the violations or if there's any warnings, then go ahead and, uh, and address them. So as far as, uh, uh, as far as what to address, what we always suggest is um, making sure that all the severe ones, and, we, and we'll go over which ones are the severe ones, the severe ones uh, that aren't warnings, but they're actual either IP infringement or actual violations, go ahead and address those, uh, those first. And really what Amazon is doing here is it's saying the more it affects their customers or their Amazon or the Amazon customer experience, the more severe they're going to go ahead and consider that violation. And then second is any laws or regulations that you may be breaching or violating, that'll be another thing. And then IP violations and everything else is sort of lower on their uh, on their risk. And then Amazon takes a look at these on a 180 day basis. So they will, it will renew. If you've got something on there, even if you haven't addressed it, it'll drop off in 180 days. But what you don't wanna do is leave it on there and sort of ignore it. Because if it is anything severe, it will lead to a suspension. But if, you, if you're gonna leave something on there and say, you know what, I could just leave this on here, 180 days, it'll sort of be removed. Well, the warning may be removed, but the impact is still there. Meaning if the account, if, or I say if like an ASIN suspended, it'll remain suspended even after 180 days, even though the warning or, or, the, or the violation may drop off, okay? But what you don't wanna do is say, okay, I've got two violations. I'm just gonna wait until 180 days uh, expires because then it'll drop off. Because you never know what can happen tomorrow or the next hour with Amazon. And I know most of you guys already know that. So as far as strategies, what do you guys do? Can I if, ask a question on that? Sorry. Sure, go ahead. Um, would you happen to know uh, anything related to uh, Amazon annotations? Uh, apparently, you can request this from Seller Central team where... They give you a record of if there's any of those uh, or bad marks on the account. Um, so that's actually part of the presentation. Um, I feel like this is scripted now, but that's that's part of the thing. So great question. Um, tips and strategies. Again, if there's any issues listed on there, address it sooner than later, and then. Prioritize the severe issues first. So again, if there's anything that's uh, that's affecting the Amazon customer experience, address those first. If there's any violations of of uh, of any regulations or laws, address those first. And then there's something that Amazon rolled out a couple months ago called account health insurance. 
Um, if you get, you guys should see this. I don't know if we have it in the presentation, but it should be in your account health dashboard on the upper right hand side. If you've got a pretty uh, clean record with them, meaning that your score has been 200 and higher for the last six months, and you're list enlisted as a professional seller, professional seller is where you're paying them 39 bucks a month, then you'll have access to account health assurance. What this says is that before they suspend your account, um, they'll go ahead and try to contact you and work it out in the next 72 hours. So you need to have a phone number with them too. So that's something new. I, I thought that was a great idea that they came up with and really a great feature. Another tip is uh, if you guys know a, a item you guys list is going to be problematic, then don't list it, right? You don't want to put yourself at risk. So that's why it's like an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? If you guys know that, you know what? I don't know if I have the receipts for this product, and this is mostly for our uh, uh, arbitrage sellers, whether you're doing online arbitrage or retail arbitrage. If you know that this brand is super aggressive in enforcing their IP, then maybe don't list it, right? Because if you are, then you're consciously taking that risk. Or if you know that, you know what, you don't have the receipts for this or an invoice, then you're putting yourself in a, in a position where Amazon can easily come and suspend you and you really don't have uh, much, uh, much in your favor. And then hire professional help uh, as soon as possible. We see a lot of clients come to us after they've tried three, four or five times and say, you know what, I, I can't, uh, I'm not getting anywhere. It seems like we're just getting templated uh, responses from Amazon. That's something where a law firm like ours will we'll get we'll usually have an idea of, of what's wrong with the account and why they're not responding. We work with hundreds of these accounts on a, on a monthly basis. So we've got a pretty good, good idea of what Amazon is thinking on the back end. Obviously we can't read their mind, but we've got a better idea than most sellers that are just doing um, POAs maybe once a year or once every five years. Um, so again, talk to a, talk to a law firm um, sooner rather than later. I always suggest that you guys talk to a law firm first before you guys uh, submit any POAs, but we'll get to that too, because I know not every, uh, every one of our clients and listeners is actually going to, going to, going to listen to that advice. And then if you're suspended, you'll get that dreaded not notification on your, um, on your seller central account. So that's what we don't want to see. Okay. Now dealing with account deactivation, what do you guys do? Number one, I always suggest gather and review all the evidence. If you've been suspended for IP or any sort of uh, violation, gather all the evidence, go through your emails, go through Seller Central, gather all of that evidence, whether it's favorable or not, right? Sometimes um, our clients like to present only um, the evidence that's favorable to them. That doesn't help you guys or help us um, resolve your case. So gather all the evidence and then Take 24 hours to just relax. If you're thinking about responding, like take 24 hours, because what we've seen before is Amazon sellers get emotional and you could tell the way they write their POA. It's all based on emotion. You want to completely remove emotion out of this process, right? And again, we always suggest that you guys contact, um, contact the law firm. Obviously, I'd suggest you contact us. I do believe we're the best at what we do over here with helping out Amazon sellers, but contact us. But again, I know not every one of you guys are going to listen to that piece of advice. So alternatively, let's talk about if you are going to be drafting your own POA, let's at least try to guide you in the right direction. So POA should have three uh, sections, right? These are the three main sections. 99% of you probably already know this. Root cause, the immediate changes you're going to make, and then the preventive, preventive measures. Another way I, I sort of explained this to uh, to my team during training is root cause is the ghost of Christmas past. What did you do in the past, right? So that's what you talk about. The immediate uh, measures or immediate changes you're going to make, this is ghost of Christmas present. What are you going to change now or what have you already changed, right? While you're writing this POA, that's going to prevent this from happening in the future. And then preventive measures, it's what it's what we consider ghosts of Christmas future. 
what changes in your business structure and your business processes are you going to make to make sure that this doesn't happen again in the future? Okay. So that's how we look at those three steps. Now, something that we always include at the end of every POA, just like the last paragraph before you guys sign is, is that uh, paragraph right there saying, listen, Amazon, we believe we gave you everything, but if you need any further information or any other information from us, please annotate our account so that we can revise our appeal or POA accordingly. Otherwise, if you are satisfied with the information we have outlined above, please reinstate our seller account, okay? Now, does every Amazon performance rep do this? Do they make the notes? No, but some of them will. In our experience, you're looking at about 25 to 50% of the people of the Amazon reps will make notes in the back end and saying you need more information about X, Y, Z, and so forth, right? So that definitely helps out when you call account help. Now, another resource that we've got for you guys, um, a link to the, to the ebook will be listed in the description is 10 successful POAs. These are POAs that we've drafted that we know have worked. Now, is this going to work for you? Probably not, right? And this is one of the things where templated POAs usually don't work, but at least it's, it's a resource to help you guys understand what POAs have worked for us and for our clients. And these are PO, all POAs that we've drafted. Obviously, the client information, any confidential information has been redacted, but at least, again, it's a good start, better than uh, starting from scratch, okay? And the 10 POAs, each one is for a different suspension reason, so pretty helpful. But uh, go ahead and uh, download that ebook if you guys haven't uh, having it already. So next, if the POA is rejected, you're going to call account help. This is um, a call you could request from Stellar Central, okay? And when you call them, you're going to be very professional, very polite. And you're going to try to gather as much information as um, as you can, essentially saying, you know what, any notes? Do we know why it was rejected? What do you suggest we do uh, next time? How do you think I can improve this? Some Amazon account health reps are going to be more helpful than others. So what do you guys do? If you see that that the account health rep you guys have isn't being very helpful, fine. Be polite. Be nice. Be professional finish the call, complete the call, and then call back again. And I'm pretty confident you're going to get another rep, right? But again, I think that's a great resource if you guys are calling them and following up after each rejection. And then once you gather the information, you're going to update your POA and then repeat the process again, okay? If your account has been suspended and you don't have access to Seller Central, meaning you can't uh, submit the POAs and you can't call account health, call our law firm. There's other ways that we could contact them and we could get a hold of them and we could submit your appeal, okay? So that's how uh, you deal with account suspensions. Now, let me go back to the question that was raised earlier, talking about annotations or notes in the account. So one way you can get those notes is account health, um, calling account health. Now, I know that there's other service providers out there that'll sell inside information. Stay away from them. Um, it's, it's never recommended that you deal with any parties like that. You don't know who they are. You don't know how accurate that's going to be. And you're just putting your account at, um, at in, really in jeopardy, okay? But my thing is call account health and they'll usually have information, okay? And then again, going back to uh, the new feature that we uh, that we mentioned earlier in this presentation, um, Amazon Assurance, you can also request a call from them. You can request a call from them and saying, I'm concerned that my rating is, for example, at 250. What do you think I could do to increase it? And they could go ahead and provide you some guidance there too. So Amazon has done a better job this year or I think it was the end of last year, I think it was in Q4 where they came up with that new program, the assurance program, saying that we won't suspend your account um, unless we, uh, we get a hold of you and we try to resolve it amongst ourselves. So Amazon has definitely made some, uh, made some improvements, but again, it's a large organization. They've got a million uh, plus employees. And sometimes, as you guys may know, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. So if you guys do need help, feel free to contact us. And um, there's our contact information and obviously it'll be in the description below too.